All right, let's talk about the difference between y-axis symmetry and origin symmetry. Okay, so we have f of x equals 2x squared over x squared minus 3. If I want to test for y-axis symmetry, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in negative x where I see an x. And so you can see I'm changing my sign on x, all right, and I have 2 times negative x squared divided by negative x squared minus 3. All right, what happens here with the square? I'm squaring a negative number, all right, which makes the negative go away. In other words, the square absorbs the negative, and so we get y equals 2x squared over x squared minus 3. Is this the same function that we started with? And the answer is yes. All right, so we plugged in negative x, the negative gets absorbed by the squares, and we end up right back where we started with 2x squared over x squared minus 3. And so right now I'm saying, hey, we do have y-axis symmetry. But we do need to check for origin symmetry as well. All right, so how do we do origin symmetry? With origin symmetry, we are going to negate the y and the x. And so I have negative y equals 2 times negative x squared, all divided by negative x squared minus 3. All right, I'm going to worry about the negative x's first. Again, I'm squaring them, so the negatives go away or get absorbed by the square. And now I have this negative in front of the y, so in order to move this negative, what happens is the negative moves to the numerator on the other side. And now, is negative 2x squared divided by x squared minus 3, is that the same thing that we started with? And the answer is no. All right, this one has a negative in the numerator where our original function does not. So we do not have origin symmetry, but we do have y-axis symmetry for this function. All right, let's look, work through another example. All right, so again, let's first test for y-axis symmetry. All right, so here I'm going to negate my x. All right, so I plug in negative x. And I have negative negative x over negative x squared minus 3. All right, what happens? Let's see. In our numerator, the negatives cancel, so we'll get an x. In the denominator, we'll get an x squared minus 3. Is this what we started with? No. All right, because the numerator is not negative. All right, let's try origin. All right, so here I am negating the y, and I am negating the x. So I plug in negative x in the numerator, and I plug in negative x in the denominator. All right, let's simplify the negatives on the right side again with the x's. So we get x over x squared minus 3. All right, now I'm going to move my negative to the other side. And when I move my negative to the other side, I get negative x divided by x squared minus 3. All right, is this what we started with? And the answer is yes. All right, so here's an example where we, where we actually do have origin symmetry. Okay, let's try one more. All right, again, I'm going to start with y-axis, and that means I am negating my x's. All right, so do the negatives cancel? No, they don't. All right, the negatives do not cancel. And so this is clearly not what we are starting with. So we don't have y-axis symmetry again. Let's try origin symmetry. All right, so what do we do for origin symmetry? Well, we're going to make the y negative, and we're going to make the x negative. Okay, so what happens here? All right, well, here we move our negative to the numerator of the other side, and we're getting x over negative x 
plus two. Is this identical to what we started with? And the answer is no. So here's an example where we have neither y-axis or origin symmetry. 